Well, even tactically as well, you say they lose the battle mentally, psychologically in effort. Tactically, the three of you might be able to allude to this a lot better than I do, but what was Manchester United's game plan coming into this, Carlton? Because it looked like it was nothing. Well, you can have a game plan. Uh, one thing is, like Gary says, you, you expect the players to run around. From the first minute in the game, New Newcastle were far hungrier. They were first to the ball. Um, they were quicker, they were brighter, they were hungrier. Their tactics, you know, it, it can go out the window. You know, as a prerequisite, you've got to be able to run around the football pitch. And that's what, you know, the last 10 minutes, they had a little bit of a flurry, but that was more to do with the fact that Newcastle tired more than, you know, uh, Manchester United doing anything in the game. It was a really poor performance. And what, I, what I'm seeing now is quite worrying in the body language of the players. And I'm worrying whether Ten Hag has actually lost the dressing room. I think, you know, he's, he's, he's leaving players out of, of, uh, who, who play in positions. You know, when you play a, a, a left full-back who, who's a, England's left full-back and you're playing him at centre-back, you're leaving Varane on the bench, you're leaving Lindelof on the bench, you've done it with Harry Maguire. Um, you're playing you, Rashford is your, your, your main man who, who has been last season. You're playing him on the right-hand side. So you're just upsetting the apple cart all the time and eventually if you do that as a manager you're going to lose your players and unfortunately tonight for me it looked like he started to lose his players. Steve, does it look like that to you? Well you, you talk about tactics, first of all at Carton's right, you, you, you have to, of course there's going to be a game plan. They both played a 4-3-3 where slightly different Manchester was because the play did try to play Fernandes in a 10 role against um, against Bruno Guimaraes who played in a 6 role for the, it was basically a 4-3-3, but the application is the big thing that I'm going to say today, as well as the body language of some of the players just wasn't right. So, if that's not right, what does that suggest usually? When well, it's it suggests. A uh, it suggests. Language. I don't. I mean, we've been talking now, and the first one you look at is why is Marcus Rashford all of a sudden looking of how good he was, how good he played for England a couple of weeks ago to what you see him tonight after 10 minutes. Is he not happy that he's playing on the right or what is wrong? I mean, we aren't going to know about that, of what's happened behind the scenes, if anything at all's happened. Um, obviously, when he comes off, he shows that petulant, he's not happy. But, you know, I think he has to have a look at himself to start with. And uh, it's not just him. I think he looked through the nucleus of the side and they've been blown away nearly by Newcastle. I mean. You know, it's a bigger 1-0 victory that we've, we've seen. I mean, um, and that's the worrying thing for every Manchester United fan and supporter, that it looks as if they're taking a few steps forward and all of a sudden they throw in a hand grenade mm. again and, um, and they have to pick up the pieces again. And it, it's, it's, it is worrying. When it's a collective downturn in form, Gary, when it's everybody, barring maybe one or two, when it's such a collective off day, collective downturn, what does that usually tell you? Is it an unhappy camp or is it maybe, and this might be clutching at straws here, the, the psychological impact from the last few games where they've taken the lead and losing it, taken the lead and losing it, and just the entirety of the season culminated in, in tonight? Um, maybe it is an unhappy camp. Um, it's certainly not a a bubbly, vibrant football club at the moment. And if you look at Manchester United, and we've spoken about this on a number of occasions this, this season, you know, the owners of the club, the Glaziers, are they, are they truly football fans or not? Well, I don't think they're really football fans. They're, they're in it because they're making loads of money out of it. Um, it's up for sale. Are they going to sell it? It hasn't sold. They've got people trying to buy it. It hasn't gone through. Um, then you have individual problems, you know, the most recent one I suppose would be Sancho, wouldn't it? The way the, the managers decided to deal with him. Has that upset some of the, the players within the club as well? But regardless of that, you know, as a footballer, you're, you're, you're self-employed. So even if everybody else is unhappy, even if you're unhappy, you know, your contract stipulates that you have to give your very best at all times for your club. And it seems to me that there are Manchester United players that aren't giving their very best at the moment. That, we all have does, bad times. Does that times. mean that all, they don't all... believe in the coach? Does that mean they don't believe in the manager if they're not giving their best? Well, it's possible, I suppose. Um, 
but when, when you look at what Ten Hag achieved last season, and I thought he made progress with the club, let's be honest, they're playing in the Champions League this season because of what they achieved last season. Um, I, you know, I find it hard to believe that they would be totally unhappy with him, but there would appear to be something wrong with the club and maybe it's just an accumulation of a number of those points that I've just mentioned you know Steve is possibly closer to the club than I am and he you know has more contacts there um, I don't know Steve it's a it's a it's a concern and a worry of course I think Carlton alluded to it are they are they good enough mm. is the big question because yes they've got some talent in the squad of course they have the Manchester United for goodness sake but too often we see in a performance where they throw the hand grenade in like that and mm. and you're then say, thinking that like, we're taking a few steps forward and, and all of a sudden you're getting a kick in the teeth again. So ultimately the manager is where the buck stops. Yep. The players can't worry about the glazes if, if that is. I do believe it needs addressed because certainly the speculation surrounding all the club all the time filters through everywhere. Yeah, it does. To the whole football club, it filters through and it does... However, that performance tonight from 10 minutes in, we were scratching our heads thinking, come on, mm. come on, man, you. And they, and they never got above, they never got above a jog, some of them. Two years, two years for Manchester United to not win away from home against a top nine side. That is an unbelievable stat, right? Yeah, absolutely unbelievable stat. And that's what I've just said to you. Are they, are they good enough? And on, on tonight's performance, certainly not. Yeah. And we, we have seen that performance too often. You're right about the manager last year. I thought he did fantastically well out of that similar core of players. Yeah. To finish in the top four, two cup finals, is better than anybody expected. Mm. But this, this season now, it seems to have, um, unfortunately, fallen off a cliff again. So getting back to that, are they good enough? Then, you know, there's been some great Manchester United sides over the decades you you were part of one yep you know how many of those players would threaten to be in the side that was highly successful in your day <laughs> not one <laughs> there's not one of them would get in the side that i played against in the in was it 92 when you went first one 92 yeah. 93 94 there's, there's season not one of, the there's not eight. one of them that would get in that team that i played that won the league in 92 not one of them and, and, and that's being truly honest. And, and what, what, what's quite worrying more than anything, forget how well Newcastle played today, but if you just look at their desire to get the ball back when they've lost it, Anthony Gordon chasing back, we're looking at Rashford on that side, Ganacho getting back on the other side, their, their desire to get the ball back, and it was all epitomised by Trippier. Yeah. I thought he was absolutely, apart from that one time, Ganacho went past him in the first five minutes, absolutely he set the tone for, Manch uh, for Newcastle United today. And, and their team spirit, their togetherness that Eddie Howe has brought there with, with their injury list. If you look at the players that Newcastle have got out, you're talking about Wilson, they've Botman. got Botman, yeah. uh, Jacob Murphy, Dan, Mel uh, Dan Byrne, Wilcock, Harvey Barnes, Matt Tackett, uh, they, they, they're all uh, long-term injuries. Yeah. All would have been first-team starters, and to still be getting the results and the performances getting out of the lads shows you that one manager is carrying his team and the other manager isn't.